I sent a message to Moody through another Freemason saying that um, I, I, I wouldn't stand for the, the setup. I knew what was going on. And uh, unless he stopped doing what he was doing, I intended to expose everything that I knew about Metropolitan Police, corruption, Freemasonry, its involvement in corruption, himself and uh, the um, former pawn squad, which I knew, I knew about. In threatening to expose his brother Masons, Simons was only too aware of the traditional punishment awaiting Masonic traitors, being cut in half. The penal sign is given by drawing the hand smartly across the body. The threat is perhaps symbolic, but according to Simons, the reality is just as bad. This is it's much more dangerous to receive a Masonic threat. It's not the sort of what the injuries to be inflicted. It means that a group of people who, who have power have this tremendous animosity towards you, the group animosity, if you like. And uh, the threat is that, that uh, certain bad things will be before you. The full penalty was that of having been severed in two, the bowels burnt to ashes, the ashes scattered over... Simons resolved to fight fire with fire. He gave a solicitor a dossier listing the crimes of fellow detectives to be published if anything happened to him. Some colleagues then offered Simons a deal, which he now discloses for the first time. I was more or less escorted out of the country. I received advice and money from, um, uh, from my colleagues. What kind of money? How much money? <clears throat> well, I, I received £2,000, which uh, in those days was an awful lot of money. Um, Where did this money come from? It came from uh, S um, Superintendent Moody originally, but I'm not saying he supplied it all, but um, it was, you know, and, and various other um, colleagues of his. Simons fled abroad. When he returned seven years later, he received a two-year jail term. Ironically, by then, the very man who'd been investigating him was himself doing 12 years. Bill Moody had been jailed in 1977, along with Commander Ken Drury of the Flying Squad. These two Masons had both been taking colossal bribes from pornographers. The Pawn Squad trials lifted the veil on a hidden world in which Masonic police were mixing with Masonic crooks in the secrecy of Masonic lodges. But honest Masons argue it is to the Brotherhood's credit that several witnesses for the Crown were also on the square. Some of the people who brought them to justice were in fact Freemasons, but primarily they were good investigative police officers and they were not, they did not depart from their, the true course of their duty. They pursued it with a rigor which it certainly deserved and which is fully merited. Back in 1877, exactly 100 years before the Pawn Squad trials, bribery and corruption had become so endemic in Scotland Yard's detective department that complete reorganization was necessary. Even then, masonry had played a dominant role. So although there are many honest Masonic policemen, Freemasonry and police corruption have always been hand in glove. For uh, a young officer to join the Masons, uh, there have got to be some question marks. I mean, why do men of 25, 26 want to join a fairly old-fashioned organisation which has uh, a fuddy-duddy image, um, a fairly serious image? They must see something in it for themselves. Yet there is a more charitable explanation for why policemen join Freemasonry one which reflects the difficulties they face when seeking friendships outside the job. Serving as a police officer, one is uh, fairly restricted into the uh, social contact that you have. You're uh, constrained with the people that you meet outside of the police service who uh, may be a, a dishonest uh, character. And Freemasonry, as I saw it, was an opportunity for me to enjoy a social life outside the police service whereby you met uh, honest and true people, because that's really um, the, the claim of Freemasonry, to be just and upright, true uh, uh, members of society. John Simmons had been a Mason for 15 years, when in 1978 he moved from Scotland Yard to take charge of the CID in the City of London Police, the force which polices London's historic square mile. Corruption had been rife among city detectives for decades, in May 1978, a security guard was shot dead as he delivered £200,000 in wages to the Daily Mirror. It was the third violent robbery to hit the city in 18 months, netting the robbers £640,000. 
Each was carried out with an ease, indicating the gangsters had been working with corrupt police. Simmons started his new job the day after the mirror robbery. Already suspicious of some of the detectives now under his command, he decided not to reveal that he himself was a Mason. I knew that the principals involved in it were Freemasons, and I didn't want to go in there uh, with any uh, chance of being caught up with them. I just wanted to avoid uh, anybody knowing I wanted to do my job as it should be done. And uh, when officers uh, first met me, uh, all the usual signs, uh, language and uh, contact were made uh, to try and identify whether I was a Freemason. Simmons didn't respond to these Masonic approaches, but his ploy came unstuck when an ambitious and talented detective chief inspector named Phil Cuthbert met an old friend of Simmons at a Masonic function. Cuthbert, um, Vesti come running into my office the next day and uh, as we said, you've been telling Porky's company, you know, and I said, well, um, what's up, Phil? And he said, you're on the square, and then he mentioned the guy's name. And I either had to make him appear a liar, and I said, okay, Phil, um, I am a Freemason, um, but it doesn't cut any ice. That makes no difference to me. Uh, as far as the job is concerned, that's outside the job. And um, he said, fine, you know, it's lovely. He shook my hand and so pleased to know and everything like that. And within minutes uh, and during the next course of a few days, all the chaps that had tried to approach me, they all come in with sort of smirky smiles and sort of said, oh, you know, uh, uh, so pleased to know you're uh, on the square. And I said to everybody, it makes no difference. Um, the job will be done as it should be done, and it has no bearing. Uh, uh, and Nobody said anything to the contrary, but um, it obviously wasn't um, taken on board of what I'd said. Simmons' fellow Mason, Phil Cuthbert, now asked if he could have a quiet word on the square. Simmons guessed this meant Cuthbert wanted to confide his crooked role in the robberies on the Masonic understanding that nothing would be revealed to anyone else. But Simmons was not prepared to treat confidentially any criminal admission, so he went to his meeting with Cuthbert with a concealed tape recorder. They met in a pub in Artillery Passage, where Cuthbert talked for three hours about senior detectives and their collusion in the recent robberies. He was also recklessly frank about his own role. I think Phil took Freemasonry in a very serious vein, and he believed that, as I was a, uh, now an accepted uh, brother, that he could talk to me under those lines. And, um, you know, many uh, Freemasons take the, uh, uh, the craft very, very seriously, like a religion. Uh, and that um, it's sacrosanct to them. And I think that he felt that he could talk to me under that vein and that I would not let him down. Simmons' evidence formed the heart of the case against Cuthbert in his 1982 trial for taking up to £80,000 in bribes. He was sentenced to three years in prison. But the man who gave evidence against him now became a Masonic outcast. I went to... Uh, um, a meeting in the Connaught Rooms, which after all, I'm sure most people know, is virtually the, the headquarters of uh, British Freemasonry. And the chap that I'd known for many, many years um, uh, was there. There's a police officer and uh, a Freemason. And uh, 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 we saw, we caught eye across, I suppose, uh, uh, twice the distant time sitting from you. And he just stared at me and just shook his head like that and um, run his, uh, his finger across his throat. I thought, gosh, what am I doing here? Um, I need to get out of this place, because um, if one man can do that, I, I need to get out. <laughs>